banning zero emissions gas certainly does not help Quebec comply with the Paris Treaty. Mm -hmm. It does the opposite. It means that Quebec will continue to use foreign gas that is not zero emissions. So, so it, what an, it's it's just it's an iron it's an ironic thing that says, in order to comply with international treaties, we're going to break international treaties and laws, and in addition, it's going to increase global emissions, not decrease the global emissions. Mr. Legault keeps repeating that he is a nationalist, but his Bill 21 demonstrates that he is quite the opposite. The definition of a nationalist, and I quote, is the term that qualifies the individual who plays the nation above everything else in his way of thinking. He emphasizes the feeling of belonging to a common culture, language, religion, or heritage. Putting the nation before globalization encourage the nation to be prosperous and autonomous in its action. Mr. Legault passed Bill 21 last April, a law aimed primarily uh, at putting an end to the search for and production of hydrocarbon and to the public financing of these activities. It does condemn the province of Quebec to become self-sufficient and to become more prosperous in terms of energy. The result was to become dependent on multinational and companies outside our province. Quester was a perfect example of the collateral damage that Bill 21 produced. It has had major impact on the nation, on Quester, on the resident of the town where the extraction was to take place, and on the Aboriginal people. The media coverage of their expropriation following the Law 21 of the province of Quebec has been almost non-existent, and yet this story represents an important issue, especially at the present time when the energy crisis is at its peak. Only Financial Post and Digital Newspaper mention it, having for their part respect the government demand of Mr. Legault on the social acceptability as well as on the net zero emission. It was simply not enough to keep their agreement made with the province several years ago. To better understand the extent of the damage, Michael Binion explain what happened during those years of research in Quebec and how it all ended for him in the supposedly beautiful province. Let's check it out. The government had a process and we uh, had an understanding that we would be respectful of the government's process, uh, which was you know, at the at the end of the at the end of the BAP environmental review, the government launched into a new energy policy consultation, and what we agreed, you know, on our own, but also in in collaboration and discussion with the government, was to hey, stop trying to move too fast, right? Go step by step. We took almost two years for the new energy policy. We put enormous effort into the consultations. The energy policy was very much about energy transition, but recognized as the Green Party in Germany recognizes today that natural gas is an important part of that. Following that, there was a process to put a new law in, uh, which we cooperated with and consulted on, and then new regulations. So uh, we took us 20 years to find the gas. And then um, it's now been coming up 12 years to try to produce it. And under the Couillard government, they said that their intention was that if it could be done responsibly, in accordance with social acceptability, they published the, the green book, you know, Livre Vert. The, they published a green book to, you know, for a process to achieve social acceptability. And they said, work with us and we'll work with you. Uh, so we did. And as I said, right at the very last month before the election, uh, over, over, I think, the objection of the of uh, over over objections within the government, uh, Prime Minister or Premier Couillard 
um, unilaterally or on his own authority decided to change the regulations without consultation, without any discussion. It was just changed. The effect being that you were not allowed to have, you know, in, in spite of this, you know, four year process under just under his government, you just weren't allowed to uh, drill any wells within a thousand meters of a waterway. There's only one percent of Quebec that's more than a thousand. So that's, that covers 99 percent of Quebec. Right. It was it was a prohibition. And it also had a prohibition on um, modern completion methods, which you know people refer to as fracking, and 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 it was only in the Utica, right? They said you you can frack anywhere you want, except where you found the gas. And and so in between, we changed government. Legault took the place of Philippe Couillard, and he bring the law twenty one, who banned extraction yeah. of every hydrocarbon of fossil fuel. Uh, what happened uh, when we changed to the government and that law appeared? Prem Pre Premier Couillard made these last minute changes to try to help him in the election. And of course, we've seen the results. It didn't help him at all. And, and the person who won the election was Premier Legault, who was promising to develop resources and develop the economy and so here you have you know one government that got elected on the basis that we promised to develop the economy and then at the last minute says no we're going to ban it and then we had uh, Mr. Legault saying the same thing and we were very supportive of, of Mr. Legault's platform uh, which was pro resource development and uh and 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 then you know immediately after being elected uh, you know, he said, well, of course, we support you. But 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 the, the word came, look, there needs to be social acceptability. You, you, you can't ask government to carry your water. You have to go talk to the public. So he said, OK, we will keep our file out of the public uh, you know, media as much as we can. And we will just go do our social acceptability work, which we did for the last three years. The first agreement that really recognized the the um you know the un you know the unextinguished title to traditional territories of first nations and, and we did and we did that voluntarily in order you know part of getting social license but we didn't do it because the first nations demanded it we did it as part of our reaching out to the community and building up a consensus of support so we really felt that on the ground we had done a better job than probably almost any project in getting local support and on top of that, and I'm, I imagine you've seen it, but the the polling consistently and, and and recently has shown that a majority of Quebecers are in favor of local resource development and local natural gas development too, a strong majority. You know, near the last minute, only six months before an election, this new bill comes says, well, okay, we told you you could have approval if you got social acceptability, but Maybe, maybe now that you have it, what we'll just do is expropriate it. And that's it. They just yeah, the the bill twenty one says we're just going to revoke your permits. Banning zero emissions gas certainly does not help Quebec comply with the Paris Treaty. Mm -hmm. It does the opposite. It means that Quebec will continue to use foreign gas. That is not zero emission. So, so it, what? An, it's it's just it's an ironic it's an ironic thing that says, in order to comply with international treaties, we're going to break international treaties and laws, and in addition, it's going to increase global emissions, not decrease the global emissions. And so, question at uh, the social acceptability. We are also going to give royalty to native community and the resident of the town where you were going to extract natural gas. Um, do you know how these people react to the refusal of the government? Well, the First Nations, we believe, well, the First Nations have uh, expressed their objections uh, formally and in writing to the government. Uh, we believe they will be like us, uh, making a formal legal uh, objection that the that the government is not allowed to override their international rights under the United Nations Declaration of uh, of uh, Indigenous Peoples' rights. I mean, and and these rights could easily be covered in Canada because the federal government has recognized that these UNDRIP rights are rights, and that Canadian law should comply. 
so I think they'll make the case that this is not respecting their uh, both their Canadian constitutional rights, but also their international rights. And and again, it seems like does it seem right to say, well, to comply with a Paris Treaty, we're going to break a United Nations Treaty on Indigenous rights? This doesn't make sense to me. So the government is trying to put itself in a position, instead of having a higher duty of good faith when they sign a contract, they're trying to say they have a lower duty. Well, this has got to be concerning to anybody who signs a, a contract with the government if there's no, no obligation of good faith at all. Mm -hmm. It is mind-boggling that anybody would believe the story that industry didn't want to sell gas to Europe. It, this is impossible. It seemed it's, but anyways, this is the story that was told, and the media is saying, "Oh well, he was here for." Oh, look at the hydrogen deal we made. Well, yeah, they made a hydrogen deal, but but this is this is not solving any energy crisis. This is a good thing, by the way. I want to be clear. I'm not against that hydrogen deal. We would be we would be thrilled in Quebec even to make hydrogen and send it to Europe too. We would be thrilled to make ammonia, which is even a better way to transport hydrogen. We're all for green energy and we would be part of that and we're happy to support that. We, we would love to make a hydrogen deal and a natural gas and an LNG deal with Europe. But um, the main point I would say is that this deal that was announced is a um it, it, I mean, it, it's it's it, it it's like saying are we going to empty the ocean with with a with a with a spoon or with a bucket that hydrogen is not emptying any energy crisis well i mean let's put the context our company originally came to quebec on the invitation of rené levesque that's how long we've been in quebec to find gas right and and we have been encouraged by every subsequent government including the Sheree government. Every government has encouraged us and asked us to please help Quebec to find natural gas. Do you know that do you know that Quebec in 2008 made an agreement with Gazprom to import natural gas into Quebec? Quebec literally was doing the same thing as Germany. We will try to find our gas from Gazprom and we'll bring it in as LNG to Quebec. The, this idea was to we'll, we'll make the Quebec economy dependent on Gazprom. I mean, this this was that's how that's how much the government of Quebec wanted gas, that they were even willing to make a deal with Gazprom to get it. So when the government then in, it said, OK, well, OK, that we got difficulty with the population, please work with us. And, and initially we were we you know, I, I'll I'll take blame for industry we didn't uh we didn't respect that enough you know we said hey just a second we've worked for 20 years you you need to help us produce it anyways we you know after the protests we thought about it we changed we changed completely our approach and we said okay we will take our time step by step we will work with the quebec population we did that so we're now 30 years and hundreds of millions of dollars of investment and now the Quebec government says, well, forget what René Levesque told you. We're just going to take it away from you for nothing or almost nothing. So what's the impact on us? Well, it's very discouraging to spend 30 years of your life and then have somebody say, well, we're just going to take it. No, no compensation, no benefit, no thank you, no nothing. They're asking us to put out more money to abandon brand new gas wells, never been used, never been produced. And they're saying, now go abandon and reclaim them. And by the way, you have to pay 25% of the cost. It would be like, I built a brand new house and the, you know, it took me 30 years to get the permits and to, to, to develop. I finally built my dream house. It's brand new. And they say, well, we're, the government's decided that we're going to take, we're going to take your house from you. And oh, by the way, you have to pay to demolish it, but it's a brand new house. Right. What do you mean? I mean, I worked 30 years to build this house and now you're telling me that I have to demolish it before I was even allowed to move in. The First Nations are being robbed of their opportunities here. This is an opportunity for First Nations to make their own money instead of have to be given money. And why would we take that away from them? And small towns, these are like, I mean, I'm sure you've been in the lowlands. There's a lot of very, there's a lot of, you know, these are not not rich like downtown Montreal or rich like downtown Calgary. These are small towns and, and, you know, ordinary people making, you know, working hard, making a living as farmers or other things. This was an opportunity for their towns to be able to 
you know, build new hockey arenas or, you know, fix roads or do these things, you know, I mean, I, the, 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 you know, you asked what the reaction was, you know, the town has not said too much, but we have to understand these towns are completely dependent on the Quebec government for revenue. We were going to give them a source of their own revenue. So very difficult for them to complain to the government when the government is their main source of revenue. But uh, I think it's a sad situation for a small town to say, hey, we could have got our own revenue even bigger than what Quebec gives us. And it just got taken away from us. And now we're back to having to get our money from Quebec City. So the Conservative Party of Quebec is for the extraction of our natural resources. It wants to the Quebec to be capable to subsist to themselves. Yes. Um, are you, if that happened, that we change government, would you be open to come back and continue your work? I mean, this look, this has been a life dream for me that like I this has been a life dream for me to say. And, and I remember very early on and it was it was, you know, just in around the the referendum in 1995. Right. And somebody said to me, you realize if if we had been successful in our first gas wells. To find gas and they were dry holes, it was part of a very, very it's been a very long, expensive process for us to find this gas. Um, you realize it could have and probably would have changed the referendum because it would have shown Quebec they could be financially and energy independent. And this could have changed the referendum. So without saying whether the vote should have been yes or no, to realize that we could find gas in Quebec and change Quebec, that, and that we could change Canada. And for the better, Quebec would be more energy independent. Quebec would be more prosperous Quebec would be more um in you know more autonomous and 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 like a a rich nation is a strong nation right and so you know we worked a long time and I think a stronger Quebec is actually better for Canada a strong independent Quebec who pays its own way is better for Canada too yeah we're we yeah we we are going to challenge the validity of this law uh both under international law Canadian law and also just this just this sense of that there's a there's a contract and and the government has a higher duty of good faith than an average citizen, not a lower duty. So please, we keep in touch and yeah, sounds good. follow that uh, to, together. I know you're really busy, but thank you to offer me the chance to tell your story. I think it was a really important um, story, especially for the Quebec, because a lot of Quebecers are concerned about the fact that we cannot extract anymore. Uh, from our province because of uh, the Lego government. And uh, a lot of people wish that um, on the 3 of October, we change government. So we did launch a new petition, a new action against the green turn energy. So if you want, you can sign the petition at nogreenreset.org. Come and as well, you can chip in really generously so we can show you the other side of the story of what is going on right now with the push of the government towards renewing completely our source of energy.